Hi, Ahmed. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm excited to let you know about our Friend Science project. Just let me know if you can see um, yep. the screen. Everything's good. Okay. All righty. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to let you know about why and how Frenzyme started, and then about our goals and what we're currently focused on. So about the why we started. So as many of you here, we want to create an open distributed bionet and democratize biotechnology. So how are we going about doing that and why? Well, where are all the bioengineers? Where is the bioengineering um, industry in comparison to all the other industries around. We, we need a lot of bioengineers because there's a climate revolution going on and there, we can speed up the process to get that uh, in check, as well as the uh, health and a lot of other important problems that can be solved with bioengineering. But bioengineering have been difficult and expensive. There are three main barriers to them, cost, accessibility, and IP barriers, for example. Uh, these uh, sequencers are very expensive and are often only found in academic labs. You don't find them in community labs. And then genetic fragments also cost some money. And then there's the IP barriers. So how do we get past that? Well, we take some um, inspiration from how it was at the early onset of computer engineering with GNU and Linux and the Apple computers. And so how would we apply that to the bioengineering space? Where is Biotech's GNU public license? Where is Biotech's Apple one and two? And where is Biotech's GNU and Linux? Well, we do have the open MTA, which was designed by uh, Linda Kahl and the Biobrix Foundation and other collaborators such as Jenny Malloy over here, uh, which gives us the ability to um, enable free and easy sharing of biological material between academia, industry, and everyone else. And we also have the Free Genes Project uh, under, also under the Biobricks Foundation, which allows the distribution of uh, lots of genetic parts for completely free. And this was designed by Keone Gendel and Isaac Larkin, which is the lead of our Friend Science Project. So about what exactly we're working on in front Friend Science and what our goals are. So Frenzymes was basically based out of uh, the Open Enzymes collection uh, from the Open Bioeconomy Lab. And Isaac Larkin is an uh, OBL collaborator who went to this frugal science course uh, the, uh, based in Stanford from Manu Prakash, who a lot of you know as the, uh, he, he was popular, popularized through his development of Foldscope. And basically a lot of our team, team members were from this frugal science course. But currently, what we're really working on is our iGEM uh, project, uh, and we'll get into that. And uh, currently, we are based in four different uh, areas in the world. We're here in Vancouver, in the Open Science Network, uh, in Davao and Philippine Genome Center, uh, Kumasi and Hive Bio Lab, um, and BioBlaze uh, in Chicago. So what's the problem that we really want to solve in Frenzymes? Well, what we really want to solve in order to democratize biotechnology is to design those uh, open enzymes and uh, design them in the way that they're frugally, they're, they can be frugally produced and purified. So how are we going about that? Well, we want to design the entire process in a frugal way. This includes the cell and strain selection, plasma designing costs, strain engineering, fermentation, extraction and purification and quantification of the protein. So for example, <clears throat> at the standard method of uh, protein purification and production in academic labs is to use E. coli. But the problem with E. coli is that it does not secrete uh, the enzymes outside of the cell. But we can, uh, we can bypass that by using bacillus subtilis and PK stores. Now, why is this important? Because we can bypass a lot of the price uh, the budget problems uh, by secreting enzymes because that would get us past using a machine such as the French press, the sonicator, and uh, refrigerated centrifuges. So this would save us a lot of thousands of dollars if we could engineer uh, our strains and our uh, en enzyme constructs properly to work in bacillus. 
And that's a big part of what we're working on right now. So we're designing uh, wetware, uh, basically promoters, selection markers, terminators, homology arms, and uh, optimizing the uh, enzyme uh, codon regions uh, to work in vessels, basically. And I'll, uh, I'll clarify which enzymes exactly we're working on. And uh, this is another example for what, uh, what we're doing in wetware design. Uh, we're designing basically library plasmids of secretion tags that uh, we can basically drop into a Golden Gate reaction and cut with our endonucleases and basically randomize which RBS secretion tag um, combination we can add to our uh, plasmid and then we can optimize based on the colonies. <clears throat> so a couple more uh, problems with the price, uh, price uh, barrier. Uh, if you want to buy commercial pl plasmids, that's uh, a lot to, uh, there's a lot of money there. And so we're using free genes uh, to get our parts. And then there's also uh, more price barriers when it comes to hardware, like I mentioned, uh, especially with the sequence, uh, with the sonicator and that stuff. But there's also, also more even when you, even when you uh, overcome the secretion problem. And so we're collaborating with a bunch of different um, uh, hardware companies, for example, Opentrons, which, um, which has this liquid handler robot for way cheaper than a lot of different uh, handler robots. And then we're also developing this open source plate, plate reader from the Chow Lab at University of Pennsylvania, um, which is also much cheaper. And basically what we wanna do is, oops, uh, we want to create a frugal biofoundry, so we can't really only focus on the enzyme production. We all we also want to focus on the hardware and the so open software, and I think that's what uh, makes this a little different from the open enzymes collection uh, from uh, the open biocounting lab. Uh, and so, some more examples of how we're planning of frugalizing our process here in the protein production phase. Uh, instead of using glass shakers and flasks, we have a design uh, basically by Sebastian Koshova uh, to use a Pepsi bottle for our uh, shaker flask. And this uh, uh, container over here and a aquarium pump to oxygenate uh, our culture. Ahmed, and like I'm, could, I'm so sorry, I have to interrupt. Could you wrap up a little? Okay. Probably sorry about that. We're over right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so uh, it's just a few more examples of how we're frugalizing our process. But basically, the enzymes we're working with right now is uh, DNA fusion polymerase and uh, T4 ligase, and a few uh, type 2S restriction endonucleases. And I'm happy to answer any more questions you guys have in the chat. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Ahmed. I'm super sorry again, I had to interrupt. Uh, we are a little over time now with the lightning talks. So no uh, yeah, but thanks a lot. It was uh, super inspiring to see that uh, and all the efforts you put in this. 